Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This is 29th in the series where we're going to speak about one of the effective concepts on uh, interest rate hedging, which is known as principal only swap. Yesterday we had a word. Yesterday we had a brief discussion about interest rate hedging, where we had discussed about three techniques, which is known as principal only swap, coupon only swap, and cross currency interest rate swap. Well, cross currency interest rate swap is also refers to the sum of principal only swap plus coupon only swap. However, in the today video of roughly 20, 20 minutes or so, we are going to speak. We are going to speak deeply about one of the one of the one of the predominant techniques in the interest rate hedging, which is known as principal only swap. Well, from this side, I am Rahul Magan, working as a corporate treasurer in DXC Services India. At the same time, I am a treasury trader in these various forums across the world, and also act also act as a business consultant for various forums. My first book, which is Options for Risk Free Portfolio, also published in in uh, is, is is already published in New York in March 2013, and second, which is Techniques to Hedge Your Interest Rate Exposure, is scheduled to published in in December 2014 in in Sydney in Australia and Singapore. I am again restressing the fact that today we are going to speak about one of the effective techniques of interest rate hedging which is known as principal only swap. Well about me, you are most welcome to join my Foreign Exchange Academy which is Foreign Exchange Mabel Thinkers which are on three places LinkedIn, YouTube and Dailymotion. LinkedIn is 2034 members, YouTube is 30 videos and Dailymotion is, is almost the same, is 30 videos. You are also welcome to contact me at 9899242978 and also welcome to write me an email at rahulmagan8 at gmail.com. Today we are going to cover two videos which is called principal only swap and post that we will cover a separate video which is known as is the CSS agreement. As a corporate treasurer, in fact in the last several years or so, specifically after 2008, the world has shown a certain emergence of interest rate hedging. If as if the reports are correct, then the total bond market in the world is 100 trillion. This is the total bond market in the world is 100 trillion. However, the derivative issued on this bond market, derivatives of bond market is roughly 710 trillion. So assume a single dollar of a bond would have 7.10 times of derivatives. Now I am not suggesting the fact that it, it is not over leveraged, however at the same time we should also acknowledge the fact that we are living in a world where interest rate market are predominantly highly over leveraged. So it is predominantly important for corporate treasurers and also for traders to hedge their interest rate risk. And like we discussed, like we discussed yesterday, any form of interest rate hedging is divided into roughly Any form of interest rate hedging is divided into three parts, which is known as principal only swap, which is known as coupon only swap, and cross currency interest rate swaps. Wherein the principal only swap refers to once you exchange your principal, and coupon only swap refers to once you exchange your coupon, and cross currency swap is nothing but principal only swap plus coupon only swap. Now take a very simple example, how this works. Take an example assuming Infosys. Infosys is taking a $1 billion loan and they have two options, either, either they can take as external commercial borrowing or they can take a foreign currency non-resident bonds or foreign currency non-resident deposits. Now once Infosys will take this, Infosys would have of our revaluation liabilities in the books. What do you mean by revaluation? Revaluation refers to conversion of foreign asset and liabilities into, into domestic, into domestic currency, or conversion of foreign currency into domestic. Now Infosys is a company having books in INR. However, they have a liability in dollar. Now they have a books in INR, they have a liability in dollar. So at, at that moment of time, if INR would depreciate, then they would have a revalue loss. If INR would appreciate, then, then they would have revalue gain. So Infosys would go to bank and say, we would like to do a principal only swap. Now how this works? Bank would say, if you are taking a bullet loan from me, a bullet loan means uh, their loans can be further categorized into two, three to three parts. One is known as bullet loan. Another is known as barball and another is known as ladder. 
Now bullet down means you are taking today pay at maturity. Barbell means there is a maturity period of two or three. Ladder means every you know they, 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 there is a consecutive uh, basically uh, after 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 every period you are, you are going to pay or there is going to be a periodic maturity. Now Infosys is taking a bullet down of ten billion dollar, assuming they they are take, take, taking an ECB contract. So in that sense, the money would come from JP Morgan New York. Now the LLN party, LLN stands for loan, loan requisite number, loan requisite number party would be JP Morgan, assuming the swap party would be JP Morgan. In the principle only swap, Infosys would pay, would receive one billion dollar from first JP Morgan India because the money is entering into India, so the swap party must be in India. The money would receive from JP Morgan India. Once Infosys will cite the money, then Infosys would pay, Infosys would repay money to JP Morgan India and get INR balance, which is assume, assume at that moment of time, assuming Infosys is citing one billion dollars, which they are returning to JP Morgan India, and JP Morgan India in return giving them, suppose the spot is sixty two per dollar, JP Morgan India is giving sixty two hundred crores for the entire loan. After ten years, Infosys would return sixty two hundred crores and will get one billion dollar. In the next video, we are going to cover the mechanism of the same, but till now we can understand the fact that Infosys is converting converting their dollar liability into INR. So I can simply mention here that the principal only swap is nothing but conversion of dollar liability into INR liability. Henceforth, they do not have any concept which is known as revaluation. So Infosys is saving themselves from all the beautiful concept which is known as revolution because the money which is hitting the books is not dollar, it is is other INR. So after I am again stressing, initially Infosys will get one billion dollar from the from the INR puff from the INR counterparty of the US which is JP Morgan US which is effectively means JP Morgan India. I am again stressing the fact that you, you can have your separate counterparties as well like you are taking money from JP Morgan US however the LRN or the AD would be JP Morgan India. However, you can hedge this with SGFC. Now, once you have that, you will re-ramit this fund. Actually, technically, this is not going to be re-ramit, but, but theoretically, you are going to re-ramit the fund to JP Morgan India. You will get your INR. So, effectively, nothing but you are you are converting a dollar liability into INR liability. So, you are, you are, you are not subject to any form of revaluation. After 10 years, you would continue, you would, you would pay 6,200, assuming the spot at which it was 6,200 and then you will get your money back. Please be not that. Please be not that. In this, Infosys would continue to pay a beautiful concept which is known as INR IRS. Indian rupee interest rate swaps to the bank every year which is effectively nothing but pause plus typo. So they would pay, pay the pause and here the pause would be what? It would be LTFX premium divided by years divided by spot it's all about a little description of principle only swap i'm again stressing the fact that principle only swap is one of the most beautiful techniques in which you are not only save save yourself from revolution because you are converting your foreign currency liability into into domestic liability at the same time you are able to hedge yourself from any kind of interested movements as well Thank you very much. Thanks for joining in. Well, this is from Rahul Mugan. You're most welcome to contact me at 9899242978 or you're welcome to contact me at rahulmugan8.gmail.com. Thank you very much. Have a great evening.